Welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks and we're dividing decimals. Ah, why do they make you do this stuff? No, really, this is even less useful than long division and that's pretty useless. If you do ever need to divide two decimal numbers together, just reach for your calculator. Don't tell your maths teacher I said that though. You're not going to use this in real life, but sometimes the powers that be feel it's good for the soul or something to do this, so we'd better learn it. Now if you take two decimal numbers, we'll do 7.2 and divide it by 0.6. This is the sort of thing we're talking about. How many times does that fit into that? Now there's two things, two topics you really need to understand first before you can do this. Firstly, obviously, you need to know how to divide with normal numbers, but that includes long division, so just be a bit careful with that. Secondly, you need to understand equivalent fractions. So you can go and watch the equivalent fractions video if you're not sure about that one. So to divide two decimals, you want to write it as a fraction. So 7.2 on the top, 0.6 on the bottom. Now the method here, the way you deal with this, is you just have to try and make the number on the bottom into a whole number. You really don't want to be dividing by a decimal number. So we're going to multiply this fraction up and make it bigger and bigger until you get a whole number on the bottom. Now remember, with equivalent fractions, as long as you times the top and the bottom of any fraction by the same number, it doesn't change. You've still got the same fraction. So we're going to times the top and bottom by 10, because all that will do is move the decimal point one place to the right in both cases. So if we times the top by 10, we're going to get 72, times the bottom by 10, you're going to get 6. So now we've got a whole number on the bottom, great, we can do the division. So it's 72 divided by 6, you just do that in your usual way. So 6 is into 72, 6 is into 7 go once, remainder 1, and 6 is into 12 go 2. So the answer here would be 12. 7.2 divided by 0 0.6 is 12. You don't want to be putting any decimal points or anything back in there afterwards. This is the same as this fraction, which is the same as this fraction, and this fraction turns out to be 12 when you do the division. So don't be adding any decimal points back in. You just leave the answer as it is. So that's one example. Let's do another one quickly. I'll probably just fit it under here. So 6.28 divided by 0.4 this time. Picked a slightly harder one. Again, you write it as a fraction, so 6.28 divided by 0.4, and we want to make the number on the bottom a whole number. So again, we times the top and bottom by 10, and you just keep timesing by 10 until eventually you get whole numbers. In this case, we only need to do it once. So you're going to get 62.8 when you times the top by 10, decimal point just moves one place, times the bottom by 10, moves over the 4. Now we've got a whole number on the bottom. I don't have a whole number on the top, but that doesn't matter. You only need to have the whole number on the bottom. That's the thing that really causes problems, having the decimal number here on the bottom. Now we do the division. So it's going to be how many fours into 62.8? So again, you're going to do normal division here. 62.8. The only difference here is you've got the decimal point here, but it's very easy to deal with. So fours into six go once, remain the two. Fours into 22, well that's going to go five times. The remainder is going to be 2, that pops onto here. And where the decimal point is in the question, you're going to have one directly above in the answer. 4 is into 28, go 7 times, so the final answer here is 15.7. As long as everything lines up properly, you'll be absolutely fine. So 6.28 divided by 0 0.4 is 15.7. So just to reiterate then, the method when dividing decimals, write it as a fraction, Keep multiplying the top and bottom by 10 until you can get a whole number on the bottom. Then just do the division normally. If you end up with a decimal point, a decimal number here, just keep the columns lined up with the decimal place above it. It'll all work out fine, if you ever need to know that. Okay, I'm Jonathan Hicks and you're watching Teach Me Maths. Mm -hmm.